Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Monday Morning Mojo, the podcast that helps you to live your best life. And we're going to jump right in. I have a question for you today. I want you to think of your greatest accomplishments, your greatest achievements, and I want you to think about how it makes you feel. Do you feel proud of what you've accomplished? Or do you feel like a fraud? Does each raise promotion or achievement bring you joy and a feeling of fulfillment? Or is it accompanied by this feeling of dread that one day your cover might be blown? That one day someone's going to find out that you're a fraud and maybe find out that all you are is lucky that you were in the right place at the right time. If you experience feelings like this, feelings of inadequacy, self-doubt, you may be surprised that you're not alone and that you're in some great company actually, because what you have been feeling is something known as imposter syndrome. And it is rooted in these fears of inadequacy and self-doubt. I've struggled with it. And you might be surprised to know that most high achievers struggle with it because a true fraud doesn't worry about it. But a high achiever is struggling with these feelings of self-doubt. So if you have been feeling this way, I want to use this time together to help you move through these feelings and come out the other side, really understanding how you can live up to your full potential. And if you are feeling like a fraud lately, I promise you that we can help you think differently because I want you to create unlimited thinking so that you have more opportunity and greater possibilities. So let's start by just unpacking a little bit more what imposter syndrome is. It's again, this overwhelming feeling that you don't deserve success. It tries to convince you that you're not smart, that you're not capable. And like I said, that maybe what happened, all the great things that you're doing is just luck. We know it's so much more than that, but it's those nagging feelings and thoughts that hold us down. And so imposter syndrome, it's accompanied by a lot of fear. And again, that fear is that one day you're going to be found out. One day someone's going to figure out that you're a fraud. And so imposter syndrome is often linked to other feelings like self-doubt, a fear of success, a fear of failure, self-sabotage. Now, it's not just a symptom of low self-esteem, though. It is really, again, this constant fear of exposure, of isolation, and of rejection. Imposter syndrome will strike sometimes at your highest levels of success. And that could show up when you're starting a new job, starting a new position or project, if you're taking on extra responsibilities, if you're asked to join a, a board, if you're there to teach or lead people, right? All those moments, all these great moments that should really be a symbol of our achievement, of our journey of our intelligence experience, right? All those great things. Instead of us celebrating it, it's when these feelings of self-doubt creep in. And so that's usually when imposter syndrome strikes. And those feelings sometimes can help you to work even a little bit harder. So this is sometimes the good thing that comes from imposter syndrome. When you're feeling like that, for a lot of us, it can actually inspire us because we don't want to be found out, and I'm using air quotes. We don't want to be unmasked. So we dig in even deeper and we spend extra time learning what we think we need to know. We ask more questions. So sometimes it can be a catalyst for even more growth, personal and professional growth, so that we don't become a bigger fraud in our own minds, right? So that's where sometimes the imposter syndrome is positive. But when it leads to us downshifting or feeling like, oh gosh, I shouldn't give 100% because I'm not qualified, then that is when it can cause a lot of problems and derail us. It can throw us off our track. 
it could create a really big gap between um, our goals and our actions. And so that's when it can work against us. And that's when it can really get in the way of opportunity. And look, like I said, I have suffered from imposter syndrome throughout my life too. And at 53, I can tell you that this is something that I really work on every day. And it's something that I think that I have really overcome because I can look back now and see how in my past, I turned down opportunities because I just didn't think I was capable or smart enough, even though I, I was being offered the opportunity based on whatever someone saw in me. So I would love to help any of you get out of this kind of spiral of thinking. It's so interesting to me because I, I believe that when we look at our natural talents, because they actually feel so second nature to us, we often downplay it. And I think that it, it's just fascinating that people of high ability sometimes have this low awareness of that ability. And that doesn't mean that they can't do great things. It just means that they don't realize the potential that they actually have, right? So imposter syndrome is also something that research has shown shows up to affect more women than men. Now, that's not to say that men are not struggling with imposter syndrome, but it has been shown that there's a prevalence of this imposter syndrome in high achieving women. And that research has shown that there's a lot that, you know, comes with that from our programming and from a lot of the traditional roles that women have. And I think that it can bring on a lot of thoughts of anxiety and can affect our performance. And so the good news, though, is that these same studies show that women are better equipped to overcome it more quickly because we women tend to have greater resilience and can deal with emotions head on. So that I thought was very interesting. Now, how do you know if you're suffering from imposter syndrome? Look, it could be difficult to recognize in yourself because we often can't see the forest between the trees. And so we may need another person to either make us aware or perhaps listening to this podcast is raising some awareness for you. And so it may be difficult to recognize it in yourself, but when you do, it's important for you then to know that with a little support, you can work through this. And in really understanding whether or not you're struggling with imposter syndrome, I think as you listen to this episode, I want to share a few signs that you want to look for. I think imposter syndrome can express itself in extreme lack of confidence. This may be true for some and not all, but if you're struggling with an extreme sense of low confidence, then you probably say things to yourself that sound like I'm not worthy or I don't deserve success when it shows up. And so most people suffer from a lack of self-confidence at some point in their lives, but when it becomes excessive or it becomes constant, you're probably struggling with imposter syndrome. If you also experience or have this desire for perfectionism, that seems to also show up a lot within imposter syndrome because those of us who are on this pursuit of perfectionism, and this is where I can relate to uh, in my own story, we tend to set unreasonable goals. We tend to set high goals. And if we don't hit them, we feel such a, a deep level of disappointment that it actually could lead to some shaming of ourselves. And perfectionists are rarely ever satisfied with their achievements because they think it could always be bigger and better and sometimes prefer to focus on mistakes or failures rather than the progress. And so my loves, that's what it's truly about. It's about the progress you're making in anything. It's about understanding that it's who you're becoming on this journey to achieving the goal and that this strive or this attraction to perfectionism is going to keep you feeling unsatisfied because you don't recognize the small wins along the way. And so for a lot of us, that can lead to feelings of imposter syndrome. 
Okay, so another characteristic of imposter syndrome is it's often characterized by this constant fear of discovery, which I've talked about already. So basically, people who are suffering from imposter syndrome are haunted by the fear that they're not only not good enough, but that someone else will find that out. That a coworker, a manager, a partner, a friend is going to see them as someone who can't do it. And so that fear can lead people with imposter syndrome to some Ill illogical extremes. They can often push themselves to the limit in order to prove something to someone. So now they're suffering from exhaustion and burnout because that desire to not be exposed or found out creates this feeling that they have to work harder than everybody else. And they tend to not see any of the progress. They tend to not acknowledge that they are enough, that they're good enough. And so this can create for some people really high levels of stress, high levels of burnout, never feeling satisfied, feeling inadequate. And that vicious cycle can really damage our self-esteem and can actually get really in the way of some of our relationships too. So again, we're sharing some signs of imposter syndrome so you can recognize if this is something you're struggling with. Someone who is struggling with imposter syndrome is constantly downplaying their achievements. They're always saying it was nothing, it's not a big deal, or they use negative self-talk, not only in talking with themselves, but with other people, right? So they become self-deprecating and that negative self-talk is this loop in their mind that is basically to convince themselves that they didn't earn their success that they don't own their results. And that negative self-talk often provides some irrational thinking, which then they turn into rational support, if you could follow that. So one symptom that you might be able to recognize is that you pass things off as, oh, that was easy. It was nothing. Uh, regardless of how much time how much effort, how much sweat you put into something, you want people to believe it was not a big deal. Or you say things like, I just got lucky and I had a lot of help, right? Instead of being able to acknowledge something great that you were able to accomplish or something that you contributed to. And you might also believe that if you were to do it again, or you were given the same opportunity that you wouldn't have the same outcome. In other words, you don't have the faith or the belief in yourself. And if you were asked to do something like that again, your fear would be, oh my gosh, no, I have to say no, because I'm never going to be able to do that twice. These are a lot of the things that tend to show up in our thinking when we are suffering from imposter syndrome. Listen, just because you doubt your abilities doesn't necessarily mean that you're suffering from imposter syndrome. I want to make that clear too. So there are going to be some valid thoughts that show up from time to time that just reveals to you, hey, that might be out of my wheelhouse, right? You want to be clear about your own strengths and your talents and your own knowledge base and what those boundaries or limitations mean in terms of you being able to do something, right? So I just want to make that clear too, that just because you're honest about, you know what, I don't know if I'm the best person for the job on that, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're struggling with imposter syndrome. It just means you're clear about where your talents lie. And so again, just because of that, it doesn't necessarily mean you're suffering from imposter syndrome. Sometimes you're just really out of your depth and, and that's okay. In those times, in those instances, it's really important just to be honest and share that, again, you might not be the best person for the job. But when it becomes super extreme, when all those things we just talked about start to show up, then that may be revealing something else, right? Now, for a lot of you listening to this, you might immediately be thinking of someone else in your world. You might be thinking of someone on your team. You might be thinking of someone that you lead or manage or maybe even a partner. Imposter syndrome may be showing up within your team right now. 
And that is something that you may want to help people acknowledge. Now, it's important that if you're in a leadership role, that you do pay attention to that and keep an eye out for team members that might be struggling with this or feeling inadequate. And it's important that you have the right approach if you do realize that this is happening within your team. You'll probably know if you have a team member that you really see as capable and talented, yet they are not stepping up or they're turning down opportunities or challenges or promotions. It could be that they're uncomfortable being in the forefront. And if they're comparing themselves to others on the team in a self-deprecating way, then that could be a sign that they're struggling with imposter syndrome. And if you or someone you know is struggling with this and you would like to overcome imposter syndrome, just recognize that this takes a little bit of work and maybe a little bit of time. And it's not going to be a quick change overnight because for some people, the things that have them struggling with imposter syndrome could be deeply rooted. It could be something that they've been carrying or struggling for many years. And so it just may take a little effort. And if as the leader, you think this is happening with someone on your team and you just don't feel like you really have the right tools, I strongly encourage you to find a coach or a consultant that can work with you and your team member, really more with your team member to help them really overcome their thoughts and feelings. So that's the first step. I just want to jump in though, because if you think you can do some work here for yourself, as I've shared before many times, step one is always awareness. You can't fix what you don't acknowledge. So number one, you have to acknowledge your feelings. You have to acknowledge that you are probably struggling with imposter syndrome and you have to get clear about what you're feeling and why. You might start with a journal. You know, I love talking about journaling, but it's just so helpful to download your thoughts and feelings onto paper, or you could speak into a microphone and dictate it as well. But I think whenever you experience some sort of self-doubt or inadequacy, write it down. Just write down a few thoughts. It doesn't mean you have to take a lot of time, especially if it's happening during the day. But you could then go back and expand on it. But if you could write down what is going on and why you think you're feeling that way and try to be as specific as possible in each situation, I think the chances are that if you can write it down, you're going to spot a pattern. And you're going to actually see also when you're able to read it or play it back to yourself, that maybe what you've been worrying about isn't such a big deal. That is the benefit of taking the time to acknowledge what you're thinking and feeling and really pull it apart and ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? You might find that you're worrying about nothing. And so I'll give you an example. Let's say you're feeling some feels. <laughs> And maybe you stop to write, I gave a presentation to the board this morning, and even though they said I did a great job and that it went very well, I know that they were not impressed. I could see that when I was speaking, they were not interested or connecting with me. Okay, so you write that down. And if you give yourself an opportunity to truly pull it apart and reflect on it, and then really get clear about how the, the board reacted to you and what was said to you, you should be able to interrogate your own thoughts and say, why would they tell me I did a great job if I didn't? And you could probably see that your fears were groundless. So that would be the hope for an exercise like that. So the other tool that I could share with you is when you have negative thoughts, when you want to overcome limiting beliefs, if you could restructure those thoughts, we call it cognitive restructuring. Basically, if you could take something negative and turn it into something positive, if you could take that thought or feeling and create a positive statement or an affirmation that could neutralize those negative thoughts and read them constantly, it will actually help to reframe your thinking and reprogram your mind. 
And so that could help you to consider yourself more successful. And that simple task could really change things for you. So the other thing I want to say, and again, this is for the average individual who is just struggling with a lot of limiting thoughts and negative thinking. I do recognize and understand that there are some people who might be struggling with a clinical level of anxiety or depression, and it may not be as simple for some. But for a lot of us, I just want to tell you that while your feelings are super important, they are just feelings and they can change. And feeling unqualified doesn't mean it's true. I'm just going to say that again. Whatever you're feeling, while it's important, is just a feeling. And whatever you're feeling doesn't make it true. So maybe you're feeling unqualified, but that may not be true. So be aware of that automatic thought that shows up and those feelings that are associated with it and see if you can change it. See if you can work on countering those thoughts and feelings with something that is based much more in reality, something that is really more truthful. See, I think oftentimes we have to look outside of ourselves for the truth too. So reach out and talk to people you trust. Ask them to share with you how they see you, how they would define your strengths. You might be surprised by the things they share. Ask them for support. And I think that can be such an important part of you changing your self-image. Listen to people you respect, share their thoughts on how you perform, on how you communicate, on how you lead, on what your strengths are. I think that can be a really helpful part of overcoming imposter syndrome. So as we wrap up this conversation today, I think it's important that we talk a little bit about strengths and weaknesses too, in terms of this conversation around imposter syndrome, because the more you become aware of your strengths and weaknesses, and I will share a couple of links as a gift to you for listening to this podcast, I'm going to share a couple of links to some assessments that I believe can be great ways for you to identify your strengths and weaknesses. I have a DISC assessment which will help you look at four key behavior traits. And we have a character assessment that we can also share with you. Understanding your strengths and weaknesses creates a lot of clarity. And if you can accept what your weaknesses are, you can learn to leverage them. But more importantly, when you realize what your strengths are, you can develop those. And that's really where our energy should go. It should go on understanding our strengths and using them at a high level. And so when you do, you should be able to raise your confidence around the things that you're capable of, because clearly those are your strengths. And so that's how we can minimize our weaknesses and how we can really show up and be more effective. And I think once you have a deeper understanding of your strengths and weaknesses, you won't have to spend so much time uh, worrying about what you're not capable of because it becomes very clear. And finally, just another reminder about perfectionism. I'm a Virgo. (laughs) Just so for any of my other Virgos out there, I know that Virgos tend to be perfectionists. So I'm with you on this. And I'm, I'm still working on this because I'm so aware of it. It's about anyone who can identify as a perfectionist needs to understand that our best strategy is to make sure that we're always setting SMART goals, right? SMART goals are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. And I think we have um, a one-page document that I can also put uh, a link. I'm going to give you a couple gifts on this one today. So if you can learn to set realistic yet challenging goals, because goals are always about growth, right? A goal is always about moving forward. So it's not about where you are right now. It's about doing more or achieving more, hitting a new level. And I totally understand that, but it has to be realistic. So if you can set realistic, but challenging goals, achievable goals, I think that also can help you to feel accomplished, right? Which will help you see those feelings of self-worth and hopefully start to overcome the imposter syndrome. But 
it, it should also help you to see that in the journey, there are going to be sometimes stops and starts. There's going to be successes and failures. And I think that if we can embrace that failure is a part of the journey towards success, because we should be able to define a failure as a learning opportunity, that also can help us combat that imposter syndrome. And I think also help us own our own success. And that's really, as we wrap this up and put a big bow on it today, people who suffer from imposter syndrome often find it hard to accept their own accomplishments. So a way for us to move past this and negate this is that we have to be willing to own our own success. And when things go well, it is okay. I'm giving you permission to attribute the successful outcome to your contribution. Even if other people have helped you and you want to give them their true recognition, which is very important, that's wonderful, but realize you were a part of it too. Give yourself as much opportunity to celebrate successes with everyone else and don't be so quick to blame yourself. While it is certainly, I think, extremely important to always take a look at where we can take responsibility, we don't want to assume responsibility that isn't ours. And we don't want to get into a feeling of blaming and shaming either. So if you do reflect on something and realize, okay, I could have done that differently or better, fine. That's great. Just don't attach so much judgment and so much shame and blame to it. So it's really about celebration and understanding that we can also visualize success in advance. I think that another tool to overcoming imposter syndrome is learning how to create vision, how to create manifestation and use manifestation in our lives and keep track of the positive feedback that you're getting. Believe the things that you're hearing from other people. Practice listening to the praise with grace. And when someone gives you a compliment, just say thank you, nothing else. Thank you is a complete sentence. You don't need to add something to the end of it. Thank you, but no, that starts to negate your feeling of gratitude, okay? And I really want to drive that home because that could be an episode in itself. Thank you is a complete sentence. When someone gives you a compliment, when someone gives you positive feedback, when someone is giving you accolades, recognition, just stand in there for a moment, accept it with grace and gratitude and say, thank you with nothing else after it. Just thank you. If you practice that over time, I believe it will start to change the way you think and feel. Imposter syndrome is a real thing. I get it. Think of it this way. Imposter syndrome is a self-fulfilling pattern of thought. It's a self-fulfilling pattern of thought. And so we have the power to change those thoughts and so if you are thinking or considering yourself a fraud, how quickly could you shift your thinking and stop doubting your own intelligence, stop doubting your own beliefs, stop doubting your own capabilities, and also stop thinking that anyone who believes in you is lying to you. If you could turn that around and overcome imposter syndrome, it's saying that you're ready to break a pattern. It's saying that you're ready to break a pattern and move forward and stop blaming yourself for any personal shortcomings, mistakes, or failures, because we all have them. And it's about talking to yourself the same way you would want to talk to someone else. So if you can overcome your sense of perfectionism, if you can overcome your tendencies to doubt yourself, if you could overcome a lot of the things we talked about on this episode, what would your life start to look like? That could be a great journal prompt. When I overcome imposter syndrome and all the things that are packed into that, what will my life look like? How will I feel? What things will I start to accomplish? What will I say yes to? How could I draw strength from that? That in itself is worth the work.